All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is episode 11 of the last one fast one podcast. It's just me today. Luke is actually at the Naval Academy trying to get his foot in the door there. Um, But we got a great guest today, Coleman Hodges. He's the production guy behind Swim Swam. Um, This is kind of surreal because I've watched so many of of your podcasts and now I'm interviewing you. So um, yeah, thanks for joining us, Coleman. Yeah, Paul, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to, I'm not usually on this side of it, so it feels a little surreal for me too, getting interviewed. Yeah, yeah. So tell us, um, for people that don't know, what what is your uh, job exactly? Yeah, so my official title with Swim Swam is production manager. Um, When I tell, you know, if I meet someone out in the world or like at a bar or something and they're like, oh, what do you do for work? Usually my, you know, my two sentence spiel is, uh, I work for a sports news website that's like ESPN, but only covers swimming. And I'm their production manager. So I curate, you know, 90 to 95% of our video content, um, meaning normally I go to competitions and interview the athletes there after they compete. Uh, I go to workouts, you know, I go to colleges and high schools and professional teams and film their workouts and turn that into media. And as of the pandemic, you know, about two and a half years ago, um, I host our podcast along with a few of the other of our um, staffers. Um, so yeah, that that's what my, my role with swim, that's the, that's the bulk of what I do for swim swam. Yeah, for sure. And so swim swam for people who don't know is just all swimming news, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we all, all swimming, everything is our goal, right? So we cover um, professional swimming, Olympic swimming, college, high school, age group. Um, we put out, you know, as much news as we possibly can and as much content, numbers, data, you know, everything um, a casual swim fan or the biggest swim geek could want about um, our sport. Uh, we try to put it out there and we, you know, technically we're, we're, we cover the aquatic sphere, right? We try, mm-hmm. we try to encompass water polo and diving and artistic swimming. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. As you can see, we don't focus on those, but um, yeah, swimming is our main deal. Yeah. I was, um, I was doing a little deep dive research. So I was like kind of scrolling through swim, swim to see like, some of the videos you guys put in, I saw something like Red Bull cliff diving. I was like, okay, they're really, they're branching out here. So that, that one in particular was, you know, they'll send us releases and oh, okay. they'll send us yeah. videos from the thing. I actually covered one of those events really? once. Um, I, so most of, for the last five years, for the most part, I've lived in Austin, Texas. Uh-huh. And uh, there was one, like the series was kicking off. It was in 2018 or 19. And like the, the Red Bull cliff diving like circuit was kicking off in um, like just outside of Dallas. And so we went and it was this like huge lake with the, you know, that had these like uh, very majestic cliff sides and they had just like set up their thing on one of these cliffs. And it was, it was a pretty cool event to cover. It was way different than a swim meet, obviously, right. um, because it was just cliff diving. Can you turn that on? um but uh but it it was it was pretty neat yeah yeah so let's get into um so how did you start how'd you get into swim working for swim swam because i know you you didn't swim in college right that is correct yeah Yeah. i i personally (laughs) find that like super awesome because i i didn't swim i'm in college right now and i don't swim my swim um my swim career is done and um I feel like in a lot of other sports, you look at like football or like basketball, a lot of these like media people are like, you know, people that were like former Hall of Fame quarterbacks. And in the sport of swimming, I find it awesome. Like, dang, like this guy's like working for Swim Swam. You see him all over and he knows more than anyone. And he didn't even, he didn't do it in college. So I think it's, that's like, for me personally, that kind of like gives me hope. Like, dang, that that's pretty cool. Let's go represent yeah but, well sorry paul i gotta ask do you still swim at all so actually i um this is funny you asked so i so about three years ago i graduated high school 
Mm-hmm. And so I stopped swimming and I did uh, ultra marathoning for a while. So I've been, um, I did ultra marathoning and then I actually, about a month ago, I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm really getting burnt out of this. So I was like, I t- told my friend, Jonathan, who swims up at Harvard right now. And I was like, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to come back and do a meet here. So I actually swam my first meet in three years, uh, two days ago. So, um, it was fun. I just decided I put on my old fast suit and I was like, all right, let's just see what happens. And, um, but other than that, no, not really. I just trained for about a month and I just thought it'd be fun, but Heck yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay. Sorry. I was, I was just curious. Yeah. Um, again, I'm, I'm used to asking the question, so yeah, I'll try no, to keep, no I'll try to keep it on me. Um, yeah. So I swam through high school, um, but you know, by the, it like age 16, I was like super, well, I was super committed for me, which I think in the grand scheme of things is probably like one foot in one foot out. Yeah. <laughs> but to me that, you know, it was like I was a swimmer. That was a big part of my identity. Um, and again, at age 16, I was like, I didn't really have a concept of what the future held or what college actually looked like, Mm -hmm. um, in a practical sense. And so like, to me at that age, I was like, well, I'm going to buy my, in four years, I'm going to have an Olympic trials cut. I'm going to be swimming in college. And then after I'm done with college, I'm going to be a professional swimmer. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's just kind of how I saw that happening. And then the last two years of high school happened. And during those years, it was kind of like, oh, that's not actually what's going to happen. Um, and so, uh, so af- it, it, by the end of my senior year of high school, I kind of decided, I realized that swimming wasn't what I, I didn't want that to be the focal point or one of the focal points of my college experience. So I decided to, you know, not do it anymore. And I still stayed active. I, I was still working out six days a week. Some of those workouts were swimming. Um, I still swim you know, to this day, uh, and really just enjoy being in the water and really grateful for that because I know you hear a lot of swimmers, you know, stop swimming and they're like, I'm never touching a pool again. Right. And, uh, yeah, so still, still stay in contact with the water in in some way or another. Um, but, um, going into college, uh, I knew I wanted to do video production of some kind and I didn't really know in what field. So, I was majoring in film studies. That was, that wasn't teaching me how to edit videos though. And so I switched my major after a year to communication, which, um, is basically like media studies Mm -hmm. minored in it and that like a combination of the major and minor, um, gave me a good solid base of how to produce videos, um, at, at, at at least a very basic level. I also had some work experience in there. I, I had at least a few internships um, throughout my first few years of college, one of which was um, interning for, I went to the University of Missouri, call it Mizzou, um, interning for Mizzou's athletic channel. So I would go to various sports events and you know just kind of film the event, get a little two to three minute video package and put it there. And so um, this is going somewhere, I promise. So, no, no, you're NC- good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> so NCAAs that year, uh-huh. uh, men's swimming NCAAs, let me specify, yeah. were in Indianapolis. Okay. My brother at the time, he swam at Purdue. So okay. he was at his fit. He took a fifth year mm-hmm. um, after he did his four years of swimming, fifth year at Purdue. So he's still in West Lafayette, Indiana, about an hour outside of Indianapolis. <clears throat> so I, I'm like, cool. Like Mizzou is not sending me to go cover the Mm -hmm. men's NCAA championships. Um, but I had never been to them before. And that's like, you know, that's the fastest meet in the world. Sure. And like, I had grown up just being a total fanboy, you know, following that meet religiously every year, both NCAAs. And so I was like, Hey, why can I come drive? It's like a six hour drive to Purdue. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, can I come, um, you know, crash with you? I'll get us a media pass um, through Mizzou and we can go watch the meet. And so that's what we did. It was the first, the first day of the meet, um, Vlad Morozov split 17 for the first time in history. 
So like we were in the stands, it was like our first time being in a big meet like that. And it was just like, oh my God, this is nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that was super crazy. And then really fun meet to watch. I got, you know, I was on deck um, getting interviews with the Mizzou swimmers of which there were a few there. And then the last night of the meet, I see Mel Stewart, who is, mm-hmm. you know, gold medal Mel. He's, he was kind of like the face of swimming media at the time. And I, I didn't even know if I knew they had started swim swam, which had uh-huh. just started a year prior to that. I just knew he, I'd like watched gold medal minutes. I knew, you know, he does swimming media and he does, he makes cool videos about swimming. So I go up to him. I'm like, Hey, my name's Coleman. I do, I do video production. You know, if, if you ever need any help with any of your videos, um, just, you know, I'd love to do whatever I can for you. He's like, okay, cool. Um, this is my email. Send me an email. I was like, great. Mm -hmm. So I send him an email like six weeks later, you know, I don't want to like email him the next day, seem over eager. Like (laughs) I give it some, give it some breathing room. Yeah. But I email him a few weeks later. I was like, Hey, you know, again, I'm Coleman. This is, I do video stuff. You guys need help. He's like, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, they send me a video and they're like, yeah, can you edit this? I edit it. Um, I send it back. They're like, this is great. And so long story short, that is how I came to start at swim swam. Gotcha. So you just putting your foot in the door, kind of asking if they need help. Yeah, exactly. And so, and then for the next five years, for the next four years, I worked remotely Mm -hmm. with them. You know, they would, um, and it, and it was a very kind of linear process or, yeah. you know, I just kind of stuck around and as needed, they would send me videos to edit. I'd send them back, you know, Mel would go to a pro swim or a nationals meet. I would, he would send me the interviews he got, I'd edit them and, and send them back to him. That turned into me going to the pro swims and the national meets and capturing the, the interviews and editing them. Um, which I kind of had to lobby for, you know, there was one meet that I was actually at, um, I paid my way there and I was just like, well, Mel's going to be there. So like, I want to go see Mel Mm -hmm. and, and be there too. You know, I want to be where the action is. And he was talking to someone he's like, man, there's a pro swim in Orlando next week or, you know, next month. And like, I really don't want to travel. And I was like, send me, he's like, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know about that. And then by the (laughs) end of the weekend, I, you know, I was like, seriously, like you can send me, I can get the interviews if you want to go. And he was like, okay, yeah, we, maybe we can try that. And we did. And, uh, I went and like, he had, we like Amazoned a camera and all the camera equipment, like to the hotel I was staying in. And it it just kind of went from there. And, you know, four years down the road, they were like, Hey, we want to, we want you to come on full-time. Yeah. And I've, I've been full-time with swim swim for the last five years. Sweet. So that first, so that Orlando, that uh, pro swim series in Orlando, was that like the first yeah. time you covered um, like a meet, like by yourself kind of like while representing swim swim? Yes. Gotcha. So the 2014 men's NCAAs, mm-hmm. I had been there. There were other people with swim swim. That was the first, but that was the first meet. It was in Austin. That was the first meet I had been to with swim swim. And it was like, whoa, this is crazy. And then, yeah. So Orlando was the first time I was there by myself. I was so nervous. Yeah. Um, I, uh, and there was a lot of big names there at the time it was 2015, but like Katie Hoff had was like making a comeback at the time. Cesar Cielo was there. I think Colin Jones was there. Um, I don't think Phelps was there, but it was, it was when he was making his comeback. Yeah. It might've been. Um, so it's like, there were a lot of big names and, you know, they were kind of depending me. I was the only person to give them live coverage. And I know I messed up at least one of the interviews. Like I forgot to hit record or oh yeah, my microphone wasn't <laughs> on. Yeah. But like, but you know, overall, it went well enough for them to be like, okay, you can do this. Like, yeah. keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Is that something you enjoy? Do you enjoy like traveling the country and, or 
the the world what it seems like these days and going to these meets are kind of like damn i'm gonna like dang i'm gonna go to iowa and i gotta go cover a, a swim meet in iowa or is it like you get excited to go yeah there's there's um there's pros and cons i'd say yeah. the last six months I've traveled so much uh-huh. and it's kind of, it kind of seems like, you know, during the pandemic, obviously I wasn't traveling at all. I got really stir crazy and got kind of depressed and cause I was just used to being on the go so much Yeah, and I had just had to sit at home. Um, and so then there was this kind of, you know, the other shift in the balance where um, the last six months I've been traveling so much um, that it's, you know, I've, I've gotten, just tired in general, not tired yeah. of the travel necessarily, but, um, you know, I, I just, I need some downtime. Um, but yeah, I mean, the travel is one thing that I've always wanted, you know, I've, I always thought it was really cool. Um, one of my mom's favorite movie is almost famous. If you've ever seen it, but it's about a touring rock band. And so I grew up watching it and, and in this, this 15 year old kid who, tours with this rock band and is writing for Rolling Stone magazine. He's doing like a feature piece on them. And so I always thought I grew up thinking like, man, that'd be so cool to be this like young kid to, you know, traveling the world with these rock stars. Right. And like, and when I reflect on my last seven years was swim swam, like that's exactly what it feels like. You know, I got to go to these big meets with the rock stars of our sport um, and, and see all these really cool places and interview, you know, interview the top names in swimming. Um, and it's just, it's brought me so many opportunities that I wouldn't have had. Otherwise it's, I've just gotten to see so much. So yeah, the traveling can, can be a lot. It can be exhausting and it can, especially when you're doing it alone. Um, it can feel pretty isolating sometimes. Uh, it can just get lonely. Um, and especially not having, like, if you're there to do a job like media, like Hmm. interview people, right. And there's not someone else who is also there to do media. It's like, you can go to the swim meet and you can talk to the athletes or the coaches or whoever else is at the swim meet. But if there's not someone else, who's kind of on that same page, who's there for the same reason, you know, there's a, there's a certain divide where, you're not getting that type of connection with, with another person. And that can kind of feel isolating sometimes, but at the same time, you see, you see people over and over again, be it athletes, coaches, whoever, and you build relationships with them and, you know, you, they see your face enough and they're like, Oh, Hey, how's it going? You know, they ask you questions about yourself and, you know, you just catch up and chat and it's really, you know, it's really nice to build those relationships and, um, and again, to see those places, like you said, sometimes, you know, we just had world champ trials in mm-hmm. Greensboro, North Carolina, which is not my favorite place, <laughs> but, um, going there this time, really not that, you know, it's like, it has a pretty nice downtown area yeah. and the weather was super nice and we got a great Airbnb. It was, it was me and Mel and Jack, our photographer, mm-hmm. and we had a house. And so it's like, it was, it was a pretty nice setup. And, uh, so even, even the places where you're like, really this place, like there can, there's definitely, you can find cool stuff to do. And, um, I mean, we, the, when the pro swim used to be in Des Moines, Uh I was the first time that happened. I was like, Des Moines, Iowa, (laughs) literally Iowa. Like, why are we going there? And then I get to Des Moines and I'm like 36 hours there. I'm like, this place is actually pretty nice. Yeah. (laughs) the pool's in the middle of downtown mm-hmm. and uh there's cool restaurants and it's like okay d- all right Des Moines not that bad like yeah. actually kind of nice gotcha yes yeah, so I'm actually living in Des Moines right okay. now that, that's <laughs> that's why I brought that up when I brought up the Iowa because I thought it was kind of a interesting stop but and that pool um that's like I live like a couple blocks from there like a five minute yeah. walk so I, I swim there all the time it's super nice I, nice I loved, pool. I loved going there in the winter because you use the skywalk, right? Yeah, it's crazy. like you, I never, I got an Airbnb at, at someone's apartment that was attached to the pool via skywalk. So I literally uh-huh. never had to go outside when yeah. it was, you know, like cold and stone. It's like, 
oh well that's pretty sweet like uh-huh. all right i can deal with that yeah for sure yeah take, take me through like when you're covering a meet like a pro series or just any meet like what are you doing like throughout the day it seems like you uh put content out pretty fast so is it kind of like you go to the meet and then you edit and then like you it's just go 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 or is it yeah just take me through that a little bit <laughs> Yeah, so it depends on the severity of the meet. Uh Like um, a pro swim is definitely a lot different than Olympic trials, Uh right? Um, I hate Olympic trials (laughs) because it's just it's just eight days of just of constant work, and I don't hate it. It's it's a great experience, but like it's you know I'm not out there like having a great time. It's like you you put in twelve hour work days, Mm -hmm. and then like you know I get I get. I try to get my workout in and I try to eat like good food where I can, because I just tank if those things aren't happening. Like I get really cranky and I try to get good sleep. Yeah. If I don't Mel and Jack can attest to this because every night at at world champ trials, it would hit like 10 or 10 30 PM. And I would just like shut down and they'd Mm -hmm. like try talking to me or they'd like, you know, be cracking jokes or like, laughing with each other and i just be like sitting on my computer dead silent and they'd be like coleman what's up and i'm like shut up don't because <laughs> i'm just trying to like do the minimum amount of work i have to get done and mm-hmm. then go to sleep immediately because i just i turn into a monster right. but so to answer your question um the day kind of starts with finals right so there you finals usually start five, six, seven PM, depending on the time zone or whatever. But, um, so you go to get to the pool 60 to 30 minutes early, again, kind of depending on the severity of the meet and what, what happens and watch finals. Um, usually at a USA swimming meet, usually you'll go through the media liaison who who's there and they'll kind of, you'll tell them who you want to talk to, or just, you know, I'd like to talk to the winning athletes in each event. The athletes come over as that usually as they warm down sometimes right after the race, but usually kind of after they've warmed down and changed and whatever, talk to the athletes, um, meet you, you know, you're usually out of there fairly quickly. Well, it, it depends on the meet, but especially as the meet gets going, as, as the media people kind of find their stride, as the athletes kind of find their routines, it usually goes pretty quickly. And so, um, <clears throat> so sometimes you can be waiting till like, you know, nine or 10 or 11 PM, especially like an NCAAs mm-hmm. where, uh, there's multiple athletes coming through and like, they really have to focus on their high performance. So like they might get a massage, take an ice bath, you know, eat a meal, whatever, before they come do their media. Right. So you could be waiting there a while, but at a typical pro swim, you're usually out by eight, eight thirty PM. Um, which at that time, grab some dinner. Uh if you haven't already eaten at the pool, a lot of times they'll provide hospitality for media and coaches, which is always really nice. But you know, maybe grab a meal, um, maybe do that with some friends or just by yourself or with who you know, if, if Jack is Jack comes to a lot of the meets I go to. Um, our photographer. And so whatever, go home. I'll usually edit a couple interviews and try to get those up pretty quickly. Like you said, like that night. Um, and then next morning I'll wake up. I don't usually go to prelims because people don't usually do interviews during prelims. Gotcha. So like I could just watch the live stream or look at results, look at swim swims live recap. And then um, I'll usually edit the rest of the interviews there and then schedule them out through the day. Um, and then, you know, kind of on a, at a pro swim, this is why I like pro swims. It's like, you kind of have the afternoon to, to do what you want. You can, Mm -hmm. if you want to go see the city, if you want to get a workout in, if you want to take a nap, you know, it's usually sometimes you'll have a few hours to kind of chill and and do what you want at a trials meet. Uh, there's usually just more to do, you know, and that's like either, more interviews or other forms of media. Sometimes I'll do like little Instagram graphics videos or whatever the case may be um, to where it's just kind of, there, there's more happening. So, yeah, but yeah, that's the typical flow for sure. And how, how is it decided? Like, 
where you go and like what videos do you you make because I found it I found it interesting you have like a a full variety like you just were out in like Spain for the what what meet was that uh, um the Marinos from two yeah I mean you're in Spain and then for practice and pancakes I mean you obviously you'll go to like Texas but then you also go to like Colombia so like what's the why do you pick so first question is like why do you pick um for practice and pancakes like how do you decide like what school you go to and then also like why like all the way um to Spain for for that meet and not like a different meet yeah so uh the practice and pancakes um is just kind (laughs) of where I happen to be at the time okay Uh, yeah and that you know sometimes I travel for that um but it started out really you know if there was a pro swim I'm going to the pro swim automatically because Mm -hmm. I'm getting interviews there. Right. And so then I would start, um, you know, just staying a couple extra days and trying to get, uh, practices with the team in the area, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so then now it's just kind of a case where, uh, like earlier in the month or sorry, earlier in the year, um, there wasn't a whole lot going on like that January pro swim in Knoxville got canceled Mm -hmm. and there wasn't going to be another one until the Chicago meet. And so it's like, well, how are we going to get media? Like we can obviously keep doing the podcast, but, um, but you know, Mel, Mel and Braden wanted some fresh in-person media. And so it's like, we reached out to the, the, uh, our stars and so to see if we could go, um, do a trip. And so I went to Virginia, Florida, and Alaska <laughs> and filmed with university of Virginia, um, university of Florida and lady Jacoby. Um, and so like that was, but it's really like just a case by case basis, yeah. you know, it's like Columbia I'm here because my parents live here and that's where I'm from. And so gotcha. I, I'm just here a lot, Texas, same thing. I lived there Mm -hmm. for, I'm, I'm about to move back to Texas. I've been in New York for the last year. Um, and so that's why almost all of the practice and pancakes in the fall were like in the Northeast, you know, I went to Uh Harvard and Princeton and, um, some club teams in, in the New York area. And, uh, so it's like, you know, it's just kind of wherever is convenient. Um, the first, at least the first six months of practice and pancakes, it was like almost all in Texas, you know, it was TCU Uh and uh, a lot of club teams in Austin and obviously UT. Um, So it's just kind of, it's just kind of how, how things work out. You know, I've gotten some really cool requests and there's a lot of places I obviously still want to hit. I'm kind of trying to work out my fall schedule right now. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes. So the reason I was in Europe was that um Loughborough University had invited me to come to come out and we were able to make that work. And so I went out there and filmed a few practices with them. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, well, this was this wasn't like while I was there. This was part of the plan. But as we were discussing the plans before it happened, they're like, well, we're going to the Marinostra tour in Barcelona, you know, stop in Barcelona. Um, and I was like that, you know, it'd be really cool if I could come hop on that with you guys. And they're like, yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, so we just kind of made that work. And, you know, I was able to get some interviews out there and race videos and get some, you know, make some cool media out of that. Um, and just to kind of answer one, one of the questions, how I decide what kind of videos to make. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually have a Mel is my direct boss. He's, he's who I, Mel and Braden are both my boss, but um, Mel is who I have the most interaction with. And so we kind of make a list of like, okay, if I'm going here, what makes, what, what, what makes sense Mm -hmm. in terms of which, what kind of videos I'm doing? Like, can we do a practice and pancakes? Can we do a day in the life video? Can we do a, like a news report kind of video? Um, And so we just kind of, you know, make a list of what we're trying to capture and then I go and, and I, I do the best I can to capture it. And sometimes you have to work on the fly and kind of mm-hmm. adjust and make things happen. But, um, you know, between those, those two countries, I, I feel like I was able to make, um, make those adjustments and put out some, um, content I was, I was pretty happy with. 
Yeah. And um, have you ever went to like a, a meet or like a practice in pancakes and been and like saw something that like you just were not expecting and it kind of made big news? I guess my question would be like, what's one thing that like you went to and you weren't expecting it and like it turned into like a, a big story? Yeah, I have. Yes, I have two of them. And okay. Both, and bo- both are both times that I filmed Katie Ledecky. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> the first time I filmed Katie Ledecky was at Stanford. It was mm-hmm. in 2018. Um, I was so I was again kind of an example of like being just where I am. So my brother did his PhD at Cal mm-hmm. Berkeley, and he actually trained with the Cal guys <clears throat> as while he was getting his PhD. That's a different story, but yeah. he graduated in May of 2018. So I was in Berkeley for his graduation, which is, you know, I don't, depending on traffic or how you get there, it's like a 40 minute drive to a two hour drive from uh-huh. Palo Alto where Stanford is. Right. So, you know, I email Greg Meehan, head coach of Stanford women. I'm like, Hey, can I come film practice? I filmed the Stanford men as well. So I, you know, email both coaches. I'm like, Hey, can I come film with you guys? They're like, yep. Go out to Stanford. It's a morning practice. It's Katie Ledecky and True Sweets are doing one workout and then Leah Neal and Simone Manuel doing another workout. Mm -hmm. And Leah and Simone's workout was just kind of like a sprinty (coughs) kind of thing. It wasn't, you know, they were doing things at a very high level, but it wasn't anything like eye popping. It's like, okay, yeah, they're, they're really fast. And then True and Katie's workout was like, so the, the main set was three, three hundreds this is long course okay. three, three hundreds this on three thirty descend okay. one to three and then 20 fifties, 200 pace. I don't remember what the interval is. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, I don't, I don't remember if they did multiple rounds, the videos there, but <clears throat> the point is that Katie true, true does the three, three hundreds and he goes like three, 14, three, 17 318 mm-hmm. something like that so mm-hmm. like he's not descending he's right. ascending and he's like kind of struggling on them but like he's making the interval right because right. like that's a pretty fast interval yeah. even for a guy who goes 15 49 it's like you know you're moving katie goes 309 306 303 jeez <laughs> so she goes basically you know it's like She's on pace to go a 404, 400 meter free right. in practice on number three of the 300s, right? That's and insane. like, I could not believe that. Like, that yeah. was just like, what am I witnessing? Right. You know, it's like, I know Katie Ledecky is really fast, but like, huh. So then, and like at the end of the practice, there's footage of this <laughs> true, you know, true is just kind of like demoralized at the end of the workout. And he's just like, how does she do like what can I do like you know it's just like she just like whooped me so it was just like geez later that that afternoon I'm there for a practice Uh and they're doing a 4 IM set and this was like Ella Easton Brooke 40 Ali Zeckley um Katie Katie Ledecky was in there but it's you know it's just like the crew and it's like they do 50s pace of like fly and then like a 300 free and then like pace backstroke and then like a tuner free and then pace breaststroke and then like a hundred free is like the main set. So like, there's another 300 free Katie goes three Oh three again, <laughs> like, you know, uh, after like doing a bunch of fly pace and like, right. I'm looking at Greg, like, is, is this like normal? And he's like, I forgot she did three hundreds this morning. So like, I shouldn't probably shouldn't have written that, but like, damn that's fast (laughs) and like the that's amazing on its own but then Mm -hmm. to like a week later is the indy pro is a pro swim in indy and she she goes 1520 in the 1500 which is still the world record yeah 1500 and she went 357 in the 400 free at that same meet you know a week after going this and like greg comes up to me at some point he's like i'm really glad you got to see what happened a week before and uh-huh. then got to see this so you can just know 
how, <laughs> like how insane this is. I'm just like, uh, yeah. I mean, makes sense why she can do the things that she can do. Yeah. She trains that way. So um, were, you, were you at that uh, pro swim series that she broke the world record at? I was. Yeah. <laughs> were you like, were you expecting that at all? Cause you, you saw what she did in practice or was it still like, what the hell just happened? I mean, I saw what she did in practice, but it, you know, like, I didn't have a ton of context of like, oh, this is what she does in practice. And this is how she usually races after, right. but it's like, I, you know, seeing that it's like, well, it makes sense because she goes this fast in practice. You right. know, it's not like she was like dogging it in practice and looked terrible. And then right. like went this bad, you know, crazy time. It's like, I mean, she's about on pace, right? She's holding three Oh threes or it, not exactly, but you know, it's like, yeah, this is, this, this is what she did. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was, for sure. that was a pretty wild experience. Um, um, yeah, go ahead. So the other one, I'll be way quicker on this. The other one just came out recently it was uh-huh. when I was there at Florida uh-huh. and her and her and Fink, you know, I, so the early part is a morning practice. She gets in with the other postgrads. So Caleb, Natalie, Hines, um, uh, Mark Zoranik, and then some other, some of the other distance kids. And they're kind of doing like, they warm up and then do buckets. And there's mm-hmm. like a distance bucket and then a sprint side bucket. But like, they're just doing buckets, which is not that remarkable to watch because, you know, it's just buckets. They're like sprinting out to 15 or whatever. Right. And then they do like a, some 50s pace, which you know, it's always, it it was cool watching him do that, but again, nothing like, whoa, but then she goes inside or like everyone goes inside and like the other, the sprintier pro scrads do like cord stuff. And which again, it's not like crazy to watch Mm -hmm. because they're not throwing down like amazing times or anything, but she gets in like a distance lane with some of the other kids and she lines up with Bobby Fink and they do 15, 100s Mm -hmm. on like an interval or whatever. And, um, she goes head to head with Bobby on, on 15 ones. Uh, and this video is out there too. Um, yeah. And yeah. like he, you know, she is on his hip for all 15. <laughs> and again, I did not expect that to happen. I didn't know that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, Oh, like I had, I had had, um, Steve Youngbluth, the sprint or the coach at Florida had picked me up and he had been, he had gave, given me some coffee. He had made me some coffee. Shout out to Steve. It was great. And, uh, <laughs> But like, you know, so I'm already, I'm caffeinated, but like my heart was racing that yeah. entire 1500s as I'm filming. Cause I'm just like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like, this yeah. is like watching the Olympics. Like, but it's even better because Katie and Bobby are racing. And it's like, is she right. going to beat him? Is he going to hold her off? Like, I don't know, <laughs> this is great. But I mean, that was one of the funnest things I've ever yeah. seen in a practice. And like, he, he held her off. She did not pass him in any of those 15 ones, but she was like right there. Right. the whole time mm-hmm. that's crazy yeah i saw that video and I, I i was surprised too i mean i was like holy smokes i thought she was gonna get him a couple times but let's um i want to talk about what's it like interviewing these these big names and um do you, does it ever phase you do you ever get nervous or is like you just know i'm like kind of as friends now oh yeah i still get nervous um, <laughs> so nervous and i think it's for a different reason now well partially right like the first you know when i was at that orlando meet um i was like oh my god these are like the stars of our sport this is crazy uh you know i was definitely starstruck in that in that moment and for lots of moments after that um but you keep interviewing people and that's kind of what you learn is that they're just people, you know, mm-hmm. they're human beings like you that happen to be exceedingly athletic or, you know, have a very specific skill set that makes them really, really good at swimming. Yeah. Um, but aspect, and that's what I learned the most from doing the podcast mm-hmm. the last two and a half years and having kind of these extended conversations with people is that they're just people, you know, and they have ticks like you, they have things they're really good at they have things they're not as good at for sure and so kind of understanding that and learning that through the years um gives me i think gives me a good perspective and kind of makes me a little more well equipped yeah. to ask people questions and to also 
have the capacity to listen to their answers, you know, and kind of bounce off of that and react to that. And I still get a little starstruck, you know, if Caleb Dressel walks into a room, you know, he, he knows my name now. And like, you know, we've, I've interviewed him plenty of times, but it's still like, holy shit, it's Caleb Dressel. Right. Um, Sorry for cursing. Uh, No, it's all right. uh, We drop F bombs on here all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I I still get a little starstruck, but at at this point now, um, you know, one thing I, I get nervous about is just remembering that they're humans and mm-hmm. um i want to come across as the best reporter i can be or the best interviewer i can be and so like i want to ask them good questions you know i'm i get nervous that i'm gonna ask a dumb question or i'm gonna ask a question that makes them be like what like why would you ask me that uh, or you know like what that doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. um and you know and sometimes being nervous about that causes the question to be worse, right? Like I stumble over my words or, you know, I I word a question poorly, but I'd say that's more what I get nervous about now is, is coming across as a a coherent um, reporter and, and asking them questions that make sense to ask them at the time, you know, asking them timely questions, asking them questions that they'll consider or that they'll think is worth their time, or that they'll enjoy answering, you know, and some that's not always going to be the case. Obviously, I'm infamous on swim swim for being toxically positive as (laughs) has phrased it now, you know, it's like, I never, it's hard for me to ask hard questions sometimes, Mm -hmm. and something I'm working on, I think I'm getting better at it. But, you know, again it's not always going to be rainbows and sunshine sometimes you have to ask hard questions because that's part of journalism but um but but again asking them in the right way yeah and asking them in an unbiased way you know Mm -hmm. it's like you can if if i'm interviewing someone who just had a bad swim which doesn't always doesn't often happen because we normally talk to people that won right but um if if you know if simone manuel just got ninth in the hundred free. She came in for a press conference at Olympic trials. Right. And that's where she dropped that. Um, she'd been diagnosed with overtraining syndrome. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you're not going to lead with Simone. Why was your swim so bad? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like you, you lead with, you try to be unbiased or this is, you know, this is my method or this would be my advice to someone. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you say, can you talk us through your race or can you talk us through how you're doing right now, um, or, you know, what, what you're feeling, but you try not to lead them in one direction or the other, because maybe for them, even though they added two seconds, that swim was really good. Right. It's like you, and, and that's hard about us, especially because if, and about our sport too, right. It's like, if someone adds two seconds, it's easy for us to think, man, that was a crap swim. And maybe it was, maybe they're really upset about it, but you make, but you have them say it, you know, it's like, you don't, as the reporter, you're not saying, why was that a crappy swim? Um, Uh So, so yeah, that's, that's what I get nervous about now is, is um, trying to be unassuming and trying to, to ask questions in the best way that I can. Yeah. How was, um, so you interviewed Leah Thomas, the, the swimmer for Penn. Um, obviously a lot of controversy in the, in the swim world with that. Um, what was that like interviewing, interviewing her? And, um, cause I thought you did a great job by the way. Um, just kind of staying, just playing it neutral, like, um, and just letting her tell her story on like an open-minded platform. What, what's that like? And, um, were you nervous going into that one? Well, thank you. First of all, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> I was really nervous um, because we knew that that interview was going to go beyond swimming, mm-hmm. right? That, that, that it would get, um, we didn't know how far it would go, right? but you know, we had a pretty good idea that that was that people who are not typical swim fans are not people who are on swim swam every day as a lot of our audience are, we're going to come to swim swam to watch that. Right. Um, And so I was nervous. Yeah. Uh, Brayden helped me with a list of questions beforehand. And Uh it's like, stick to these, 
and be pretty rigid about that. And again, Mm -hmm. nervous because I don't want to ask a question in the wrong way. For sure. Um, Yeah. But I'm, I'm getting nervous just thinking about this again. Yeah. Um, But that, I mean, to me, that interview was about being unbiased and it wasn't about, well, do you think you're taking an opportunity away from someone or do you think you're being, do do you think you're, um, you know, telling, telling a certain community that this is the right thing? It was like, it was about her. It wasn't about me or what questions I was asking. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, I just, I, we tried to leave the questions as unbiased as possible and not, you know, I think the, the, the tough question there was the issue of fairness. And I think Mm -hmm. I asked it like, you know, do you think these, I, I think I just said, do you think the rules as stated are fair? Because that was that was the thing, right? It's like she right. followed all the rules. And so she, um, and, and so she competed, but that, yeah, it was a hard one. But again, um, to me, that interview was about, was more about Leah's journey to where mm-hmm. she had gotten to at that point, because it was in November. It was after her mid season invite, but it wasn't, but there was still some uncertainty as to whether she was going to be competing in NCs or conference, I guess it was, it just hadn't, there wasn't as much uncertainty as it, like, it just hadn't really been a thought on most people's radars at that point, but she had just, you know, posted nation leading times. And so people were just kind of starting to, there's just starting to be buzz around her. For Um, sure. So to me, that interview was a lot more about telling her story up to that point and not so much looking ahead to potential championships because that was a lot more uncertain. Gotcha. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like Leah hasn't um, done a lot of interviews. Why do you think that um, she did one with Swim Swim? Um, Again, I think it was because there wasn't as much buzz Mm -hmm. around her at the time. I think that I would like to think that, um, well, for starters, Mm -hmm. I had been, (laughs) I had done practice in pancakes with pin a month prior to that. Um, and so, you know, I had, I had spoken with their coach at that time. I did not know who Leah Thomas was, um, but, uh, but I had been there and hopefully at least, you know, I was, I was somewhat of a familiar face. And, um, again, my goal is to be the best reporter I can be and to be, um, as fair to my subjects as I can be. For sure. Um, and so maybe she thought that that is the treatment she would get by coming mm-hmm. onto an interview. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like she declined. I, I don't, she's done one media thing since, I think since that um, mm-hmm. with, with ESPN and AC right. that just came out a few weeks ago Yeah, uh, or maybe a couple weeks ago. And other than that, I don't know of any media she's done since my interview with her, um, maybe one or two other things, but it's like at Ivy championships did not talk to the media at NCAAs did not talk to the media. Right. Can't, you know, from a media perspective, I obviously wish she would have Mm -hmm. from a human perspective can't say i blame her yeah absolutely Um, i mean if i was in her case i probably wouldn't want to talk to the media either yeah but um yeah i i think a big reason was that she wants to do what she can for her community Mm -hmm. but that's that is what i believe you know yeah she wants to be an example for trans kids who are coming up in this in sports or in Mm -hmm. life right and show them that it is possible to chase your dreams um, and do it as a trans person. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
so I, I think in, in one sense, you know, sh- media is a good thing for that. Yeah. Um, and, it, and I, but I do think a big part of it was that there just wasn't as much buzz and controversy around her at that time as there was after that interview came out and gotcha. in the preceding weeks and months. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I just thought it was, it was a huge story. I think I looked um, the other day at like 300,000 uh, views on, on that podcast. So I was like, <laughs> I got to ask Coleman about um, what it was like and to do cover such a big story in the, in the sport of swimming. Um, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll switch it up here a little bit. Um, what, what's your favorite, these are kind of just some closing questions. So what's your favorite um, season to cover of swimming? Do you like, do you prefer like professional swimming? Do you like NCAAs? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I like summer just because I like warm weather. Uh huh. Um, I mean, I love the 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 buzz around the big summer meet is kind of unlike any other meet. Like even NCAAs. It, NCAAs is like a meet of its own, but like the buzz around a world championships this summer and Olympics last summer is kind of unprecedented or just in a league of its own. And so, excuse me. So, um, I mean, and, and again, I just, I like traveling when it's warm and going to places where, you know, you're going to either be warm or hot. Uh, the, the, so I think that's two big reasons. Just the excitement level goes up. Everyone mm-hmm. you can feel everyone's energy kind of rising. And then the travel is just better. Like this summer nationals in Irvine, Irvine is absolutely top three favorite places to go in the U S for a swim mm-hmm. because it's just like, it's the weather is always great. The, the facility is amazing. Hospitality is usually good, but if not like the food around there is good, you can go to the beach. It's like, it's just a great place to go. And so, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say like the professional, like spring and summer uh-huh. is usually is the, the time of year. I like the most. Yeah. And what's, um, what's the favorite pool? What's the favorite pool you, you've been to? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just said Irvine's top three. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to try to think if any pool I've been to can top that. uh you know i i don't to to have a swim meet at i think i think irvine is my favorite Uh palo alto like stanford's facility is almost identical and sometimes in my mind i get them confused but Mm -hmm. (laughs) they're both just ridiculously nice but irvine is irvine wins out because of like the the stuff to do there is much more accessible. Whereas Palo Alto is like, you know, just kind of right. Yeah, way harder to get around. Um, my favorite pool to swim in mm-hmm. is in Austin, Texas. It's called Western Hills athletic club. It's where I swim masters. Uh-huh. And it's just this little like 25 yard pool that uh, is like outdoors and it's like surrounded by trees. And it's where I do a lot of relaxed swimming and Uh it's just got a really good relaxed vibe um so if anyone needs to swim masters western hills athletic club is where i recommend but in terms of meets i'll i'll stick with irvine nationals is there this summer i'm always stoked to go to a meet in irvine gotcha all right the next the next question i got for you is um so we we've only had swimmers on at, at this point like basically people that were still currently swimming. So I'll, I'll twist it a little bit up for you. Um, if you could interview or, or swim with anyone dead or alive, um, who would it be like? I mean, I, I tell our other guests, like you can, you can do laps with Abe Lincoln or, or anyone, anyone who you want, who, who you picking. Wow. That's a lot of power. <laughs> do they have to be a real person? Let's go. Let's go real person. Let's go real okay. person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Real person. Dead or alive. Who am I picking? Um, I would, I would s- swim laps and then interview, man. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, <laughs> but I'll go with Stevie Nicks. Okay. 
Stevie Nicks that I, I think it would be fascinating to interview her and just to hear about her life. I'm sure there's a lot of interviews out there, but, um, but, uh, and then we can, we can do a chill master's workout. Stevie cool. Nicks. All right. And what's the favorite meat, favorite meat you've ever covered? I should have these ready to go. Favorite <laughs> meat. It's yeah. not Olympic trials. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, Olympic trials is a great meat to cover. And it's, it's unlike any other meat you've ever been to. Like most unique swim meat, mm -hmm. hands down Olympic trials. You know, it's such a spectacle. There's fireworks. Again, it's just, it's for me, it's a lot of work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> favorite meat I've ever covered. Um, there was a pro swim in April, 2021 mm -hmm. in Mission Viejo. It's San Santa, Santa Marguerite. I think that's Mission Viejo. It's Grant Schultz's home pool. Yeah, so okay. Mission Viejo. Um, that meet was just great because it was a pro swim. So it was, again, just a little more relaxed. Um, Jack was there with me. My, uh, Bex who used to photograph for swimming world. She's, she used to work for Finice. She was there too. Um, so like we had a good little media crew there. It was the first pro swim since lockdown that I went to. And I, that I think we all went to. And so like, it just felt so good mm -hmm. to, be able to do our jobs again, be able to go to a normal swim meet. It was the first swim meet. I, well, I've been to, there have been one like U S open, but like, that was not that great. But so like, this was like the first real taste of like a, a swim meet with like right. all the pros there. And like, I got to see the media people there and, um, it was, it, it was in mission. It was in SoCal which like that falls under the Irvine category. It's like beautiful facility, weather's great, food's great. Um, and so that, that's just what comes to mind immediately because it was just so nice to get back into that routine, to travel again, to see th the swimming people again, to be at an outdoor pool. Um, so that was, that was a really great meet. For sure. And will you, do you go to like the world championships and Olympics? Or are you, are you at home when, when you cover those? So the, this time I'll be home. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to Budapest. That might change in the future. I got to go to the short course world championships this past December in Abu Dhabi. Um, but that's kind of on a case by case basis. So gotcha. this time I will be at home covering Budapest stateside. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and uh, last question here is um, any advice, any words of wisdom for the viewers out there? Just anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, like I said, you know, in my origin story, just if, if you want to do something, um, you know, just go in that direction. And, you know, I know chase your dreams sounds kind of uh, cliche, but just go in that direction and things might not turn out the way that you envision them in uh -huh. the future. But if you go in that direction if, and if you keep kind of going and taking opportunities as they come up, even though it might not be the opportunity that you had envisioned, right. if you take that opportunity, something good will probably come out of it. Right. Gotcha. So if you're in a career of swimming or sports or video or anything else, you know, um, just, just put yourself in that position to have opportunities where you're meeting new people, you're going new places, um, and, and things usually come up and, and work out one way or the other to where you're going to learn something, or you're going to take away something that's really valuable to you. Um, I mean, in, in terms of my swim, swam story, that's, that's what I got is it, right. just, you know, put yourself in positions to learn and grow and you're going to end up in a good place. Gotcha. Very, very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Coleman. That is episode 11 of the last one, fast one podcast. Um, it's in the books. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.